Hello, welcome back to Gub Farm. It's that exciting time when I'm getting ready to harvest um, the, the hazelnuts. Had a little walk around and there's nuts and hundreds of trees. Now, not a lot, but you know, a cluster or a couple of clusters. So the 2020 planting has nuts on them and a few on the 2021 planting. So um, I'm going to get the mower out. I'm going to start mowing around the trees, clean it all up, and then in a couple of weeks I will then um, um, harvest the nuts and we'll see what sort of yield we get. But before I start, I have to um, do a periodic service on the tractor, grease the mower, etc. So um, let's get started. An hour later, that's it. So let's make a start mowing around the trees. I have finished mowing around the trees, so I'm just going to head inside and have a chat about the research papers I've been reading and what is considered best practice um, for orchard floor management to maximise tree growth and yield. I'm going to talk through about 10 or 11 different research papers and their findings. Um, around orchard floor management strategies or more specifically around tree growth and yield and I'll provide my interpretation of what the data is, is saying and it's up to you then to do your own research. So this first paper it said that mowing neither increased nor decreased crown diameter so the, the size of the tree when used with herbicides so if you mow and then you spray off the grass with herbicides, you know, th there was no um, gain or loss compared to other benchmarks. However, when solely used without any form of herbicides, without any grass suppression, the, the tree crown was 29% smaller. So the key takeaway there is, if you're going to mow, you have to do something to suppress the regrowth. It looks like if you just mow and let it regrow without any form of spraying or some other method to uh, reduce the regrowth, um, the tree will not perform as well if the measurement is the size of the crown of the tree. The second paper, it compared the different pre and post emergent um, chemical treatments at varying strengths to straw mulching, mowing and vetch used as a, 
as a green as a green mulch. And this is quite interesting. This comes up in a few different papers. There's kind of people wanting to see if there is much benefit in terms of um, yield or growth um, from using green mulches. And their findings were straw produced the strongest growth and corresponding yields, beating chemical treatments. And also worth noting, beating green manure, vetch around the trees. It looks like from these two papers that repeated mowing without some form of suppression of regrowth um, results in a decline. And indeed then it goes, goes as far as saying if you want to maximise yield or tree growth, you should look into some form of uh, mulching around the tree. And in this case, they used straw and it performed the best. So this third paper is quite interesting. It's a, it's a metadata analysis of various other research papers. And it goes through the pros and the cons of the various orchard management approaches. With tillage, so some sort of mechanical uh, weeding, correlating with re reduced tree growth. And that's interesting, I've seen that uh, come up repeatedly in um, anecdotal and research papers. Generally speaking, um, digging up around the roots of a tree is a bad idea. And I've seen this firsthand with my own trees. Um, I went thinking it was best practice to remove the grass and you could see a decline in the trees after I did it. It took them about a year or so to get back to themselves after it. So it's strongly, from my own experience and what I've read, strongly recommend not to, for, to weed around the trees or introduce any form of mechanical tillage around the base of the tree. It also goes on and it discusses the benefits of mulching. And to quote, placing a mulch material in the tree row has consistently led to superior tree growth and often higher fruit yields in a number of occasions and fruit crops. Now this fourth paper, it kind of talks a little bit about hay mulch. So one of the things I've been looking at then is, well, can you use the grass, you know, as a form of a cotton, a cotton blow, it's called, um, mulch around the trees. And the research I've read suggests that that approach increases the, um, the nitrogen in the soil significantly and it appears to lock up the nutrients and result in a decline in the performance of a tree. So paper six is quite interesting. It looked at, well, what is the impact of increasing nitrogen um, on, on, on the yield of hazelnuts? And what it found was, as nitrogen increased, yield declined and so did kernel size. So the trees do not respond well to um, high applications of nitrogen. So that then raises the question, well, how, is there any way to offset the impact of increasing nitrogen in the ground, especially if you're going to use some some form of um, a, a hay mulch. This next paper is quite interesting. What they did was they looked at how could you um, apply nitrogen um, to the ground. It looks like the biochar, it offset the drop in pH that comes with high nitrogen applications. So it looks like biochar potentially is a way to um, offset pH lockup that comes with um, potentially using a, a cut and blow approach around the trees to mulch. So that's quite interesting because biochar is, you know, it's quite, well, it's very low cost to produce, just dig a pit, burn some, burn some timber. So that's um, definitely an area I want to explore. Could I, you know, can I use a cut and blow strategy and introduce biochar and, you know, hopefully get good yield in the tree um, without that drop off in pH that typically comes with that approach. There are quite a few papers around mulching and the trend is quite clear. Mulching produces um, better yield and better tree growth. It reduces competition um, for the tree root system and it outperforms um, chemical treatments etc. So then the, there's a question around well, what is the best um, approach for mulching. It looks like wood chip mulching comes out best. You have straw up there as a good contender as well, but also there are things like mats. So this next paper is interesting. It talks about manure and bark mulches. And one of the things it highlights is um, how they reduce toxic um, hydrocarbons in the ground. So I think there's an issue if you go for um, a mulch 
which stops the, the ground from breathing. And it suggests that, you know, wood chip again is, is the best approach. It finds the right balance between letting the ground breathe and suppressing um, grass regrowth. So where I've reached in my thinking is, it's clear that if you mow, and just repeatedly mow, that causes a decline in the performance of the trees in terms of growth. It looks like the best way to maximize yield and um, beating um, chemical treatments is wood chip. And again, um, other forms of mulching do also work, but some of them, such as the plastic sheeting, they're shown to um, correlate with toxicity building up in the soil. And some people say that's because the soil can't breathe. So it looks like wood chip has a nice, um, it gets all the nutrients into the ground and um, it allows the soil to breathe while suppressing the grass. So if, when I mean, you go through all the, the different approaches, green mulches, etc. So if your benchmark is to do nothing, just mow once a year just to keep the grass uh, not back and keep the diversity in, in the field, in the orchard. So if that is your benchmark, do you improve yield to get to do better than that mulch? I would say wood chip failing that, I would say um, straw. You could use plastic and it is effective, but I think you have to look at the toxicity built up in the ground. Sitting below that benchmark, it looks like green mulches sit below and uh, things like mechanical tilling, they all sit below. So where I've, what I've decided upon is once a year, I'm gonna knock back the grass and then I want to just keep building up the wood chip um, around the trees. The big issue I have is supply, um, you know, it requires a lot of wood chip. I have the coppicing forest now underway, so that'll give me a reasonable source. But I have to now, I think I'm just going to start talking to my neighbours. So if any of you are watching this, neighbours, um, if you're cutting down some trees, especially Sally, which is very common around right here, give me a shout and uh, don't put a match to it and um, I'll get a wood chipper out and run it through. So yeah, I'm going to mow, going to apply wood chip. Right, it's time to start harvesting the trees and we'll cover that in the next video. So until next time, good luck.